Hello again, everyone, and welcome to the Online Soapbox Church. Great to see you all here today. Uh, today, we're going to be hearing from our brother, John Cho, and he's going to be sharing with us on the topic, what is the relationship between God and Jesus? And from what I can understand, um, this has come about from uh, John having various conversations with people. He's got such a heart for sharing about God. And so we're really looking forward to your ministry today, brother. Uh, so to start us off, John, what did your friends believe? Thank you. Thank you, Lino. Um, I have been involved in a lot of conversations related to God and the Bible and everything. And I've gotten myself into a lot of different conversations with different people relating to the relationship between God and Jesus. Uh, for example, there was a friend of mine that I knew, that I worked with, and he, me and him, every single morning, he would come to, he would, he would, he would yell, how do I know? And then I would yell back, the Bible tells me so. <laughs> and every single morning, we'd share some sort of word of the Bible. And, you know, there was just a pattern of having the grace of God with me all the time. And I just loved having conversation with him. And once upon a time, we went over some topic relating to uh, the book of Job. And he was talking to me. He was like, oh, that's, that's, that's how we know that that God and Jesus are, are the same. And he he is, <laughs> he's like way older than me. I'm not going to tell you the exact amount, but he's like really old. And I wasn't sure how I was going to respond to that. In the amount of times that we have agreed with the Bible, we just disagreed with this part. And I wasn't really sure how I was going to come with that. So then I was like, okay, I need to better myself in the understanding of the Bible and understanding of Scripture. So then I'll be able to, in a situation like that, tell the truth openly and allow the person to hear what the Bible says. Yeah, that's what I got up to. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Thanks, John Chow. So, you know, is God happy? And do you think it's important for us to understand the relationship between God and Jesus? Yes, yes, indeed. It's really important for, for us to hear and understand the, the will of God between us and knowing who God is and who Jesus Christ is. Uh, in the book of John, chapter, chapter 17, verse 3, now this is eternal life that they may know you they may they know that you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent, tells us there as well, like that that God sent Jesus. And it, it shows the difference between for, for you to send someone, it, it can't be yourself. And the book of uh, Jeremiah, chapter 9, verse 23 to 24, do not boast about your, your wisdom, strength, or riches, but boast about this that he understands and knows me, that I am the Lord who exercises kindness, justice, and righteousness on earth. For in these I delight. And that that is that is another indication that you know it, it shows a picture of who God is. And even in our the book of Malachi chapter four verse sixteen. Uh, pe people were speaking about God. God heard them. And in the book, a book of remembrance was written for those who fear God and uh, and meditate his name. So that your name gets put into the book that God puts your name into. You meditate on his word and his name. So that, that's another indication of who God is. So that's about it. Thank you, Lena. Awesome. Thanks, John. So does the Bible call Jesus God or man? Thank you for that. Um, in 1 Timothy chapter 5, chapter 2, sorry, chapter 2, verse 5, God will have all men be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. For, the, for there is one God and one mediator between God, a man, the man, Christ Jesus. I read this and I was like, oh, that's, that's a pretty clear indication of if there is a God, 
and there's a mediator, that's that's an indication of the difference between a God and a mediator, a person that will be able to join us between God and us. So then he'll be a mediator. And also in Acts chapter 2, verse 22, Jesus of Nazareth was a man accredited by God to you by miracles, wonders, signs of which God did among you through him. So then I, I thought again, that's another indication that there is a there is a difference between God and Jesus. Because it says here that he was he was accredited by God to do the miracles that he has done through his whole journey of living life. And I thought it was very interesting there. Uh, the book of Isaiah, chapter 53, verse 3. Uh, this is a very another, another interesting one. He is despised and rejected by man, a man of sorrow and acquainted with grief. To, to, to my understanding of who God was, I was ah. Uh, I, I I don't think any I don't I don't think anything is written in the Bible about God um being having grief or despaired in any way or rejected in any way. So I was like, oh, that, that's another indication that there's a difference between God and Jesus because Jesus has these qualities that don't show the same qualities that God has. So I was like, yeah, that's another indication that there's a difference between God and Jesus. Thank you, Lenore. Um, I like how you know you're you're going to scripture to find these answers because it's it's such an important thing in our in our walk in our search with God um, that we look to His Word for for the answers because they're always there, aren't they? And right. um, so, focusing on that, you know, what did God say about Jesus? Thank you, thank you for that question. That's very interesting. I uh, relate to what you just said. Um... To, to the best of the knowledge, I'm not, I'm not going to say my knowledge, the, the, the best knowledge of knowing God is through the Bible. Because I know for I know that nobody else speaks to God like in a conversation. So his word is how we receive knowledge of who, what, when, why God is and the story of God and the story of Jesus and so on. But uh, relating to the question you just asked, uh, what did God say about Jesus? In Matthew chapter 17, verse 5, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Hear him. So I was off. Uh, that's another indication of who Jesus was. If, if, if Jesus is someone, he is the beloved son of God, that God is telling us to hear him, hear his word and everything. And uh, also in, in Luke chapter 1, verse 40 to 52, um, the child grew and became strong in spirit, filled with wisdom and grace of God. Uh, and the grace of God was upon him. Jesus increased in wisdom and stature for in the favor of, with God and man, who in favor with God and man. So it made me understand as well that I don't think God grows in anything. I, I know for a fact that God is God is the creator of everything. So he does not need he does not need to grow in anything because he is everything. But then Christ Himself, Jesus, grew in statue and wisdom and through his trials and tribulations that happened to him in life, he gained more wisdom and he got better at his path of following the will of God. So it made me understand that a lot better. And yeah, that's about it. Thank you, Lenore. Thanks, John. So yeah, you know, with the scriptures that you're sharing, we're, we're definitely seeing the, the differences between God and Jesus and also the understanding the, the relationship or how, how they were, how, for example, um, Jesus was viewed from God. Uh, you've got a question you you gave me to share. Uh, what did Jesus say to the young man? Yes. I'd like to share on this for me, please. Indeed. Uh, in Mark chapter 12, verse 32, uh, the, scri uh, the scribe said to Jesus, Well, teacher, you have spoken your truth, for there is one God and there is no other but he. And 
that's another indication of Jesus Christ sharing that there is only one God and there's no other but himself. And to love him with all your heart, understanding, soul and strength and to love one's neighbor as yourself is the, 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 the message that Christ was trying to show us as mankind. And I, I, thought, I thought that was very interesting that Christ came to, oh, well, the scribe came to that Christ and Christ answered in that way. And he um, showed in verse 34, uh, now when Jesus said, when Jesus saw that he answered wisely, Jesus said to him, you are not far from the kingdom of God. So then I was like, well, oh, since he since he answered that way, Jesus Christ is saying that he's not far from the kingdom of God. And I was like, well, that's very interesting that Jesus Christ said that after his answer to that. Thank you, Lenore. Thanks, John. So, John, can you please explain to us um, the differences between God and Christ Jesus? Okay, we are in First Timothy chapter six, chapter six, verse sixteen. God cannot be seen nor die. So, and Jesus Christ Himself was on earth among people. And he was he was seen, and he he also died on the cross. So I was like, "There's bad, there has to be a difference there. There's definitely a difference there." Also in Mark chapter ten verse eighteen, Jesus said to him, "Why do you call me good? No one is good but the one that is God." And I was like, "If Jesus Christ is not calling himself good, but he's calling that one God good." There's bound to be a difference between God and Jesus, because uh, also in Hebrews chapter three verse fifteen, Jesus Jesus was tempted in all points as we are, yet without sin. So Jesus Christ had the ability of having free will like we do, and he was tempted like we all are, and he he did not fall to that temptation of sin. So. Uh, I understand that God cannot be tempted of evil or anything. So I was, there's, there's, there has to be a difference in this whole picture. And yeah, thank you. Thank you, Lenore. Yeah, thanks for that, John. And and these are really good scriptures um, because, you know, if, if someone has had that understanding, you know, that they've been taught that God and Jesus are, are one and the same, you know, the yeah. scriptures that you're bringing out, um, challenge that because that it doesn't align and and this is the thing sometimes um you know we can we can share a doctrine that can be quite overwhelming but you know if we just simply come back to well what does the word of god say you know it can get the the mind thinking so uh, i really appreciate what you're sharing because just your line of thinking it doesn't line up does it yeah. um we also see in scripture that there was so much uh, reference to Jesus throughout the whole Bible um, and one book in particular the Psalms um, has a lot of indirect references to Jesus um, can you share with us you know what did the Psalms say about Jesus thank you Luno um, Psalm 110 is a very interesting one the Lord said to my Lord uh, Psalm 110 from verse 1 the Lord said to my Lord sit at my right hand till I make your enemies your footstool. And it made me question uh, if, 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 if Jesus is going to sit at the right hand of God, they're, they're bound to be in the same, in the same, whatever description is going to be in the same space, I believe. And if, if, if he's going to sit beside him, then they're bound to, there has to be a difference between the two people, one person sitting and the next person sitting beside him. That, that, that being would have been God and the other being would have been Christ himself. So it made me, it made me question as well, relating to what you just said before, it made me question myself and to ask myself, yo, the, these, there are so many scriptures here that separate Christ and God. So with all these scriptures, Christ and God cannot be 
the same. And I believe that to sit at your right hand, you have to be a different being to be able to sit beside yourself or beside, not necessarily beside yourself, but beside someone. You must be a different one. Thank you, Luna. Thank you, John. So if we go to the end of the Bible now and look at the book of Revelation, what can you share with us about that book in connection to what does it say about Jesus and God? Thank you, Luna. Uh, Revelation 1, verse 1. The, the, the revelation of Jesus, of Jesus Christ, which God gave him to show, to show him servants things that which the, the things that much shortly take place he sent and signified by his angels to him servant john so it, it in john chapter i mean sorry revelation chapter 1 verse 1 it it goes in the order of god jesus angels and then john because it's saying that God had a message that he told Jesus, so that Jesus told the angels that the angels ended up telling John. And it made me understand that there had to be a sharing of information between a son and man. And if God and Jesus were one, then I, I imagine I, if I, since I'm one, I talk to myself, I don't talk to my arm and tell my aunt, or I don't just pass a message on to my arm or anything like that. So, and also in um, Revelation chapter 2, verse 18, and to the angel of the church of... Uh, uh, Tharnatara, these things say, the Son of God. So, it, it, it's again, it was, it was pointing that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. So I was like, even at the end of the Bible, it's saying that it's being it's being shown that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, and I mean, the Revelation was put together a certain amount of time after Christ had ascended to God. So then I was like, it has to be the end of the question of the difference between God and Jesus. If they are one, or if they are two separate. Things and I was like, yeah, I came to the conclusion that Jesus Christ and God, uh, Jesus is the Son of God, as it says multiple times in the Bible. Thank you, Lenore. Thank you, John. Really appreciate the time you've taken preparing those scriptures and to share. Um, just taking this moment, um, is there anyone else that would have something they'd like to add? I've seen a few scriptures popping up. Uh, any thoughts? No, Brother Phil, did you have something no. you wanted to add? There's, been, there's also once um, that John didn't mention, like, like in Ephesians um, ch chapter 4 and verse 4 to 6, where, where Paul is just going through um, what we believe, and he said, uh, Ephesians 4, verse 3, Endeavour to keep the unity of the spirit and the bond of peace. There is one body, one spirit, even as you are called in one hope of your calling. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all. So very, very clear um, that you know we have one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and, and Father of all, um, you know. So, you know, this was just a simple rundown. And uh, also in uh, First Corinthians, it, it talks about the head of um, God as Christ, the head of Christ as man and head of man as, as a woman. So, again, we have just that order that was given. But, but I think one of the greatest um, examples um, which we have in the Bible, which talks about the relationship of God uh, and Jesus Christ, is, is actually found in, in 1 Corinthians. And it talks in 1 Corinthians um, about um, 
from verse 20, 1 Corinthians 15, verse 20, um, Christ is raised from the dead, and as an Adam all die, even so in Christ will all be made alive. But each in his own turn, Christ the first fruits, then when he comes, um, those who belong to him. And it says, then we'll, then the end will come when he hands over the kingdom to God the Father after he's destroyed all power and the authority. And, um, and then Paul just explains that a little bit. And he said, um, all things have been put under the feet of Christ. And he says, well, that excludes the person or God who put everything under Christ's control. And uh, in, in verse 28, um, it says, when he has done this, uh, when he's subdued all things and the last enemy, which we destroyed his death, when, when he has done all these things, then the Son himself will be made subject to him who put everything under him so that God may be all in all. So even when Jesus Christ has been reigning for a thousand years, he still has received that power to do all of these things from God. And in the end, he says, hey, God, I've done everything you wanted all the kingdom has been set up. There is no more problem, no more death. Now I'm going to hand it back to you. And, uh, yeah, so I, I think actually in First Corinthians 15, it's one of the clearest ones why, um, you know, there really is a separation between God and Christ. And Paul, said, Paul explains that by saying, you know, God has put everything under Christ's feet, but the only thing he can't put under Christ's control is God himself. And then Jesus, in respect to his father, is going to give everything back to God and say, God, thank you for all of this. Here is the kingdom that you have organized. Thanks, Norm. Uh, there may be somebody, somebody else with any ideas. What about that, that verse in the New Testament where it says, Mighty God, Holy One, Emmanuel? You know, that's probably the most used one for God as oh. one. Oh yeah. Um, uh, what is that? I'll look it up. <laughs> Helena was just mentioning one. Um, I think it's in Isaiah, which talks about the names given given to to Christ, and it's here we the mighty prince. The um, you can't find it. Um, but in that, um, again, we always have a reference to God. It is God who has given the power to Christ. And the term of Jesus being God, well, when when Jesus was, they're almost going to stone Jesus um, because they were saying, oh, you make yourself equal to God. And Jesus turned around and said, well, hey, I'm only calling myself the son of God. And he then brought out the verses from the Old Testament, which said that um, when God spoke through priests or judges, it says in the Old Testament they were called gods. Uh, and so Jesus was saying, hey, I'm not claiming to be God, um, but God can put his name on people who are doing his work. Yeah. And so in that time, it, it's talking about Jesus will be called these various different names. And again, we'll get that in the future. Uh, so it's not something he is yeah. the everlasting father, the prince of peace, etc. Full counsel of God the mighty. So it is in Psalm 95, uh, well, it's 37. Psalm 95, 37. Yeah. Isaiah 9, verse 6. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. To yeah. us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government shall be on his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Yeah, and so in that um, that first one, for to us a child is born, a son is given. So um, we know that Jesus had a starting point when he was born of the um, through Mary of the Holy Spirit, and it, uh, any of those sort of things. The he will be called Wonderful Counselor. We've got no issue with that. The Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace, 
and of the increase of his government, there will be no end. He's going to reign on David's throne over his kingdom. And, uh, you know, but these things were promised by God to Jesus Christ. And, you know, with the everlasting father, um, often everlasting is father of the age. And so in the kingdom for the thousand years, virtually Jesus takes on the role of being the father or the guardian or the person who would guide the believers and the nations during that time. So there's no issue with that. But he it says he will be. It does not say it is something that's going to happen in the future. It does not say he is uh, the mighty God or the wonderful counsellor. It is something which is going to be achieved when Jesus Christ returns and sets up God's kingdom. And then we saw from 1 Corinthians 15 that Jesus, even at the end of that time, um, after he's reigned on the throne of David, he is still going to give that kingdom back to this above. Yeah, great. Thank you, Phil. Um, Candice, you had something you'd like to share? Yeah, another point of view is that um, other examples that Jesus didn't know everything in today's reading or the old prophecy that Jesus gave was in Mark 13 and 32, how he says, but of that day or that hour, no one knows, no one except the Father, neither the angels in heaven nor the Son. So if Jesus doesn't even know when he's coming back, that shows that they're separate entities, doesn't it? Only God the Father knows. So, hmm. <clears throat> yeah, Thank you, Candice. It's a really good point. Is there anything else anyone would like to share before we end this meeting? No? All good. Well, thank you very much for everyone's input today. Uh, it's a great topic.